Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at what's called the change of base law for logarithms and how you can use it to write logarithms using logs in a different base, as well as how you can use it to simplify expressions. Now to see what the change of base rule is and why it works, we're going to go back to solving a simple exponential equation in two different ways. So we're going to solve that first by using base 3 logs and then using common base 10 logs. So if we're using base 3 logs for that, you get to a solution pretty quickly because if you take the log base 3 of both sides, this cancels out and you just have that x is equal to log base 3 of 7. But if you solve it with base 10 logarithms, you still get a solution. Something doesn't cancel out right away, but you can use the power rule to move that in front and then you have x times log of 3 and that's equal to log of 7 and you can divide both sides by log of 3, right? So that that is gone and you just have that x equals log of 7 over log of 3. Now we've solved it two different ways and so what that means, if x is equal to this and x is also equal to this, then it must be true that both of these things are equal. Those must be equal. So what that's saying here is that log base 3 of 7 has got to be equal to log 7 over log 3. So this is an expression with base 3 logs and this is an expression with base 10 logs. So they're different bases used in the expression but they're equivalent expressions. So we're going to do that more or less again here but we're going to do it with variables because then we can be sure it works for everything, right? So that's a similar kind of an equation there. If we solve it first with base b logs, a equals b to the x. Take the log base b of both sides. As we've seen before, that cancels out right away and we just have x is equal to log base b of a. If we solve an x with common base 10 logarithms, Take the log both sides. Nothing cancels out right away, but you can of course put this x in front with the power law. And we have x times log of b equals log of a. And then of course we divide both sides by log b and you get log a divided by log b. And then thirdly, we're gonna use just any base in general here. So we start with that same equation, but this time we're just gonna take the log of any base, log base C, log base C of both sides. Again, neither of those cancel out right away, but you can put the X in front again, times log base C of B, which is of course equal to log base C of A, and then divide both sides to get log base C of A over log base C of B. So again, just like we did specifically with that one single equation before, in general here, log base B of A is the same as log A divided by log B in base 10, or in fact, more generally in any base, log of A over log of B in whatever base you like. So if we wanna write it out here, we're gonna say that the logarithm base A of some value B is equivalent to the logarithm of b divided by the logarithm of a. So if we want to write the first part of what we've got here, log base b of a equals log a divided by log b. Now most of the time when you use it, that's what you're going to use because you're going to want to change things to base 10, maybe to use a calculator. But of course, in general, you can use any base you like here. Log base c of a over log base C of B. That's the change of base rule. Now let's do a few things with it. Of course, the most obvious thing you can do is take a logarithm that's in some other base and evaluate it with base 10 logs. If you happen to have a calculator that doesn't have a log base or button other like that one. So we can write log base eight of 70. Of course, we can go to the calculator and enter that as log base 10 of 70 over log base 10 of 8. 
All right, so we'll do that quickly right now. So of course we can then say log of 70. Got to make sure to close that bracket on this, divided by log of 8, and we'll get that. So roughly 2.043, etc. Now this calculator does have, as you've seen probably already, a log base feature on there. So we'll just confirm that this is the same, right? Log base 8 of 70, and you'll find it is the same, all right? So we'll just say this is roughly equal to 2.043, all right? So write a different expression for this that involves base 9 logs. So we can, of course, say log base 3 of y is equal to, just write it right away with base 9 logarithms, log base 9 of y divided by log base 9 of 3. And we can actually simplify this a little bit because 3 and 9 are related there. If you do recognize that this 3, 3 is like square root of 9, which is, of course, 9 to the 1 half, you could just write this right away as log base 9 of y over 1 half. And of course, dividing by half is like multiplying by 2, so we can make it 2 times log base 9 of y. Or, of course, if you don't recognize that for the bottom, now that you know the change of base rule, this expression, you can actually use the change of base rule on it to make it a little easier to work with. And what I mean by that is, let's just work with this over here. You could do this. You could say, I don't like that that's in base 9. So I could actually write it as log of 3 over log of 9. If I don't have a calculator, if I chose base 3 for that, this is a little easier to work with because log base 3 of 3 is 1. And log base 3 of 9, likely you have an easier time with that. 9 is like 3 squared, so that's like a 2, which gives you your 1 half on the bottom. So either way there. In any case, you end up with this being what that expression is equivalent to. All right, and we'll do some more here. So for this first one, if you recognize right away that that looks like the right-hand side of our logarithm law, in other words, it looks like log base C of A over log base C of B, which was, of course, just equivalent to log base B of A. Then you can just write this right away and just say this is equal to log base 2 of 7, and you'd be done. But that's not the only approach that you could take to working with this. You can do some other things here. You could say, I don't know, maybe I'll change it to base 2 and see what happens here. So if I write this thing on the top as, let's say, log base 2 of 7 over log base 2 of 5. I wrote an expression for that thing on top. So that is equivalent to that. And then the thing on the bottom, I could write as, put a big line here to make sure I keep track of where I am. I can also write that in base 2 logarithms. I could say log base 2 of 2 over log base 2 of 5, and that's equivalent to what's on the bottom there, right? Dividing those two fractions, I could write it as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the thing on top, I could write as log base 2 of 7 over log base 2 of 5, and instead of dividing by this one, I can multiply by its reciprocal and make it log base 2 of 5 over log base 2 of 2. Now, if you notice here, you have this expression on the top and the bottom, so we can actually just cancel that out. And then, this expression here, log base 2 of 2, log base 2 of 2 is, is 1. So this is like log base 2 of 7 and a 1 because we canceled those two things out. And then this is actually equal to 1 as well, right? So we have all those things that are 1, and then we're left with log base 2 of 7, which is what we wrote up there. So there's multiple ways to work with this. All right, let's do this last thing here. We have this that involves a couple of different expressions, and we have these logarithms on the bottom here. So I'm going to start this by saying that this expression is equal to 2 over and I'm going to write this using the change of base rule. And I'm actually going to change it to base 2 logarithms because I've got something that involves base 4, something that involves base 8. Those are both related to 2, and I think that's going to be a good strategy. 
So if we change the bottom expression there to log base 2 of m over log base 2 of 4, and then the second thing here, 1 over, we'll change this to log base 2 of m over log base 2 of 8. Now we can actually evaluate these on the bottom of each of those because they're just numbers and they're related powers there. Log base 2 of 4 is actually 2 because 4 is 2 squared. So I'm going to write this whole thing here as 2 over log base 2 of m over 2. That thing in pink there has turned into that. And on the other side here, log base 2 of 8, that's actually going to be 3 because 8 is 2 to the third. So then this whole expression I can write as 1 over log base 2 of m over 3. So that's what that turned into. And then from there, if I have 2 divided by this fraction, I can write it as 2 times the reciprocal of that, 2 over log base 2 of m. And then the other one, similarly, I can make that 1 times 3 over log base 2 of m. And so then I can multiply the, each of those out. 2 times that fraction, 2 times 2 is going to be a 4 on the top over log base 2 of m. The other fraction, 1 times 3, is going to be 3 over log base 2 of m. I have two fractions there that have the same denominator, same denominator, right? And so I can add those together and make it 4 plus 3, or 7 on the top, over log base 2 of m. And then I can use the change of base rule here again with this expression. I can write that as, on the bottom, log of m over log of 2. And then I can change it again to dividing by this fraction here is equivalent to multiplying by its reciprocal, log 2 over log m. And then I can multiply that, what we have on top there, 7 log 2 over log m. And I can then actually use the power rule here. I can put this on there if I want to make it one single logarithm of a number there. I have to go up here, running out of space. We'll use this space. I can make it on top log of 2 to the 7th. And of course we have log m on the bottom. And on top then that's log of 128 over log m. And then we can kind of use the change of base rule in reverse. Log of 128 over log of m is log base m of 128. And that's that. So that's quite a few steps to get there, but you do have it as a single expression, a single logarithm. All right, so that's the change of base rule, where it comes from, and several examples of working with it.